All right, so um, could I get your attention? Um, so this morning, we talked to you guys about the overview of medulloblastoma, um, a childhood brain cancer, and now we're going to focus on treatments. So um, this portion of, of our talk will go into the current treatments available to patients with medulloblastoma. Um, so there's surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. All right, so for the surgery, uh, it's divided into a couple stages. So the first thing that happens is that the surgeon will meet with their patient and go over the actual uh, surgery itself. Uh, address any questions they might have, and most importantly, they'll determine what drugs they're going to use for the anesthetic. Now, in terms of the anesthetic, they have two choices of um, what class they can use. There's what's called general anesthetic and what's called local anesthetic. So for a general anesthetic, the entire body is put to sleep, whereas a local anesthetic will numb just a particular area. So um, when dealing with medulloblastoma, a surgeon can choose to use either one. Uh, local anesthetics are usually reserved for older patients. And that might sound a bit strange, but uh, there's actually a good reason for using an anesthetic that basically keeps the patient awake. The reason is that um, if the patient is awake, you can uh, sort of map out certain areas of the brain and test their response to a stimulus to see if uh, you're interfering with anything vital. So uh, to give you an example, say for um, the tumor is located near a speech area, um, the surgeon can apply a current to that area and test the patient's response. So, if their speech becomes slurred or if they're incapable of talking, then they'll know that this is a, a part of the brain they need to be careful around or just flat out avoid. Uh, the other advantage of local anesthetic is that uh, it erases the complications associated with general anesthesia. So even if um, the anesthetic is carefully chosen according to a patient's medical history, there's a chance that they might have an adverse reaction to it or it may be difficult to wake them up. Uh, using local anesthetic, they're kept awake the entire time, so you don't have to worry about the waking them back up. And it also improves their recovery time, and they can leave the hospital uh, earlier. So for the actual surgery, what happens is that they'll make a small incision uh, wherever the tumor might be located. It's usually about two or three inches, and they'll pull apart the skin. And after that, they'll just cut out a small fragment of the skull to access the tumor. Then they'll begin uh, just resecting the tumor, which means they pull it out section by section. And then once they've remo removed as much as they possibly can, they'll reattach the skull with uh, uh, special bone cement, and then they'll stitch up the, the incision. And then after that, the patient is passed off to the other uh, forms of treatment, which are chemotherapy and radiation. Okay, so the second phase of treatment starts with chemotherapy or radiation therapy or a combination of both, depending on the patient's unique experience of this cancer. So if we start talking about chemotherapy, it's essentially a combination of drugs given to the patient after therapy to remove any remaining cancer cells that the surgery could not remove. So the gist of how chemotherapy works is that it prevents cell growth by um, interfering with the brain of the cell, which is the DNA. Um, now DNA are instructions um, inside each cell that detail a variety of functions. So for example, um, how the cell will produce energy, what the cell will contribute to the body, and more importantly, how the cell will grow and proliferate. So chemotherapy drugs interfere with DNA replication, the act of making new copies of DNA, and as, as well as DNA repair. In this sense, it stops the growth, growth of a cell and it can cause cell death or cell apoptosis. In other words, chemotherapy interferes with the parts of our bodies that naturally grow fast. For example, our hair, um, and uh, in this case, the cancer cells to prevent them from growing out of control. However, this is also a cause of the major side effects. So it'll interfere with the parts of our body that grow fast normally. So um, our hair, our, the lining of our intestines, and also our bone marrow, which is the home of our immune cells, the defenders of our body. So because of these side effects, you see um, a variety of outcomes that many patients who go through chemotherapy experience. Um, they lose their hair, they lose their appetite, uh, they become nauseous, and they also become susceptible to a variety of normal common diseases or illnesses. So things that are naturally, um, they should be easy to get over or to overcome, like the flu, or the common cold become a challenge for these patients to fight because their immune systems are have taken such a beating from this treatment. Now, the problem is that medulloblastoma is a rare childhood cancer. That means that there's no predetermined set of drugs or dosages to give to each to, to give to all patients with medulloblastoma. Um, so in this case, the healthcare team will have to conduct a thorough assessment of each child and tailor the treatment so that it's effective and manageable for that child.
So radiation therapy is something that, um, as Jody said before, can either be done with chemotherapy, separately from chemotherapy, or before chemotherapy. So um, radiation, if you guys remember from uh, physics class, uh, high school physics class, you remember the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, there's these th there's uh, radiation is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and along with that is microwave, which we've all had experience with, we've all used, and may be very familiar with if you are in a university and have to heat up food a lot. Um, but microwaves, uh, the idea is that they warm up the food by um, shooting microwaves into um, the water of your food and speeding up the uh, water molecules moving in within your food, which um, as a result heats up your food, and therefore when you eat your food it is warm. So radiation therapy is a lot like a microwave, except it's much stronger. And um, instead of heating up your food, it's to um, target a tumor cell. The idea is that it would target a tumor cell and cause double strand breakage, which then um, causes the cell to be unable to divide or replicate and instructs the cell for apoptosis. So the form of radiation therapy that we usually use is called intensity modulated conformational radiation therapy. And with this type of therapy, the idea is that you have um, a bunch of beams which go towards the tumor cell. So I will open this marker first. And so if we pretend that this is a tumor cell right here, so you have the tumor cell, and then you would have radiation beams. So the radiation beams, usually um, you're going into a machine, so the radiation beams will come from different directions. For example, it can come from this direction and go all the way through, or it'll go from this direction or this direction. The idea is that within the center, is where most of your tumor is or most of where the cells that you want to kill are. So with radiation therapy, as you can see, you have this area as a tumor. So everything else surrounding it that all these beams are hitting are actually um, cells that are, um, you would need and cells that are normal that you want to keep. So with conformational radio radiation therapy, which is the current standard that we use for radiation therapy, what happens is that instead of having beams that pass through this way, this way, and this way all the way through, you would have beams that stop here, around here. So it takes off this area, so it does not hit the um, it does not hit the area surrounding on this side. Unfortunately, as you can see, there are still some areas here surrounding that are still hit by the radiation beam. Um, the radiation beam is usually made of photons, and the, um, it pro provides a very steady stream. So it goes straight through, and although you can stop it at the end of the tumor, it will. Um, it's not as nice as not having it on this side as um, as we would want. So problems with having it in the um, non-cancerous area or the area that's not the tumor is that you would have things like cognitive decline, so inability to um, process information as well, to, to um, think or to be able to speak to people, having motor impairments, or um, having problems hearing as some of these areas are also um, uh, controlling for hearing. So some of the new therapies we've had lately is called proton therapy. Um, there are about 10 centers in the States, but um, they're not as well known in Canada, they're not as well known in a lot of other places, and um, use, being able to go to proton therapy is um, it's only in like really extreme cases and depending on your doctor or your physician. So with proton therapy, what happens is that it's slightly different from confirmation therapy, which um, because instead of having it just stop on the other side, it'll also stop the ones on this side. So although you'll still have a little bit going through um, the the nice, the good tissue that you want to keep, um, a lot less of it will go through. So the idea is best illustrated with a graph. So this is my graph. This side would be um, the radiation <coughs> dose, so I'm gonna call it dose. And this side would be um, the distance across the, um, the brain or the area that you're um, putting radiation through. So I'm just call this distance. So with the normal um, therapy or IMRT or intensity modulated radiation therapy, the idea is that the dose would kind of go like this. So it's highest right where it enters and lowest right where it enter exits. So that's kind of normal, you would expect it. Um, but something special about the proton therapy is that instead of having it highest where it starts, it'll be lower where it starts, it'll come up and come back down. So you can time it so that this part right here where it's highest is exactly where the tumor is. And that way, we have much less um, radiation on the sides um, and much more in the middle, so you're more effectively killing the tumor and not having as many side effects. 
So just to quickly summarize, so uh, the current treatment for medulloblastoma is threefold. We start with surgery and uh, attempt to remove as much of the tumor as possible. Uh, then you progress on to chemo chemotherapy and radiation. And while this is fairly effective, uh, it's very aggressive at the same time, and it can lead to uh, development of a lot of severe side effects. So next we have another presentation for you guys where we're gonna talk about some new emerging research and how it can relate to uh, potential treatments in the future for less adverse uh, side effects. Do you guys have any 